the, the man, the myth, the legend. We're live here with Tony Hawk, skateboarding god. Oh, so thank you. Thanks so much for your time. Oh, yeah, my pleasure. Thanks. So I think everyone who <clears throat> I told I was interviewing you, they either told me that you inspired them to get their first skateboard or they learned about skateboarding through your video games. Take us back for people who don't know your story. What got you initially on the board? Uh, my older brother. He was, uh, he's 13 years older than me. He was a surfer in the 70s and started skating because skating was sort of an offshoot of surfing. And uh, I, one day I just picked up one of his old boards in the garage and started riding it down the alley and um, eventually started doing it with my friends because they had gotten into it. And I just, it was more of a hobby. You know, I didn't really think of it as something that serious. But then I went finally to the skate park one time on the invite of a friend and when I saw people literally flying out of swimming pools. I was like, that was my wow moment. And I was like, I want to do that, whatever it takes to do that. <clears throat> and not long after, you know, broke my teeth and got my first concussion and started to figure yeah. it out. And like now you, you went pro at 14, 36 years later, we're still here. You're still in the game. What do you credit for your, your success? Um, I think it's, uh, for me, it was always about challenging myself and, and not resting on my accolades. So I always wanted to keep getting better, and I didn't really care about how I placed <coughs> or how I rated. It was just more like I want to, I want to do more tricks. I want to, I want to, I want to expand on these things I've I've done, and then eventually found my way into business sort of by accident. I started a skateboard company um, because I wanted to be in the industry, and I thought my career was waning. And then eventually got to do video games, and when I got to do video games, that changed everything. You started in 1999. It just ended uh -huh. in 2015. It's reported that it's made um, 1.4 billion in sales. I mean, wow! If you could put a number on it, how much do you think you profited off of um, <laughs> that? <laughs> if you could just <coughs> how it? Let's see. Um, Is that a majority? Do you think of the, your? The, that was the majority of my income for sure. Yeah. Yes. Um, I, uh, I, you know, I never expected that that would be the big windfall or the big opportunity, but but for sure, once we started doing more. Um, sequels to the game, that's when everything kind of changed and, and I realized that I had a lot more opportunity. Thank you, I had a lot more opportunity for doing things with skating and promoting skating because of the recognition factor of the video game. And, um, and it allowed me to stop competing and to, to really explore those opportunities. And um, it was, yeah, it was changed my life, yeah. for sure. Do you think there's opportunity, I mean, I know it ended in 2015, do you think <coughs> it would, there's opportunity in that space for you still? Um, I, I hope so. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm actually working on a, on a mobile game right now. Um, it's not based on our old series. Um, it's with a new developer, but I'm excited because, you know, I'm back in that space and, and I get to have input and, and lend my authenticity to it. Yeah. So what is your main priority now? What are you <clears throat> working on? What is your focus today? Um, well, it's still very much centered around skating. Um, I still do exhibitions and things like that, but... Um, for the most part, just promoting skating as a whole and uh, d you know, helping to develop new public skate parks through my foundation, which we've been doing 16 years now, helped to develop almost 600 parks. Um, so that's the work I'm most proud of, but, but really just doing anything I can to promote the awareness of skating to keep it more internationally recognized um, and not just so much in North America. And um, doing things like this, you know, like, like actually doing speaking engagements because that has been sort of a new avenue for me, but it's fun because I get to spread my message and, and connect with people from all walks of life. Yeah, I also read that you want to try to get the stigma that it's a boys club. Um, oh, absolutely, and yeah. I think that, that's changing much, that, that has been um, changing quickly over the recent years, especially with the advent of, of the Olympics, like skateboarding will be the Olympics, there will be equal disciplines of male and female, um, and nowadays, it's, it's not unusual for girls to pick up skating and to be serious about it. And I mean, we have a, we have a pro skater on our team, Lizzie Armanto. Um, the girls that are now pros, it's not, you know, there was this old cliche that was like, well, she's pretty good for a girl. That is way, you know, way beyond that now. Yeah. Like the girls that are good are, are really, really good and, and extremely gifted and, and, and dedicated and, and um, they have an incredible determination and perseverance, and um, it's been really fun to see. Yeah, and speaking back to <coughs> international markets, I mean, there's huge business opportunity there. And is there any certain um, areas you're eyeing? 
Um, well, we, our, our biggest push is with our clothing line, Hawk Clothing, and yeah. so we've actually gotten into Walmart in South America with that clothing line. We're working on other deals in, in Europe and, and then possibly in the future of China, so um, that would be the biggest push internationally. Um, of course, we always want to sell skateboards, so we have our Birdhouse brand and we have international distribution, but um, that market's pretty flooded right now. and. Um, I'm really I'm excited to see what the future brings because I do feel like it's it's very bright with the international growth. Yeah. So you started Birdhouse 26 years ago. Yep. And um, what do you think from if you think back to yourself 26 years ago, what would you tell yourself as you're starting this business? <laughs> um, I would tell myself that um, I mean I learned the hard way, but 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 the main lesson was you're not good at everything, um, and especially in business, you know, in terms of marketing in terms of advertising graphics like even though I could do those things it didn't mean I was good at them but it, but it, I was doing it more out of out of uh, necessity because we didn't have a we didn't have the budget we didn't have the team to do that stuff and so um, I would tell myself like let go of your pride and let someone else do the do this work yeah what is what do you think is one of the biggest mistakes you made um, I think getting into getting into businesses that I wasn't <coughs> completely confident with, or, uh, sorry about that. Yeah, um, no. Getting into, I, <coughs> I got into a few businesses that, that I didn't understand and thought I could just make it work, and it didn't, and, um, and even my partner was not the expert in those things, and so uh, we, we made some mistakes and lost a lot of money, yeah. <laughs> and eventually let the experts do the work. Yeah, and I also read that one of your <coughs> biggest mistakes is you signing a bad, you would say to athletes, don't give away your brand. You said you signed a bad licensing yeah. deal. Luckily, I learned that uh, early on. Yeah. I signed my rights away to a couple deals in the 80s, and um, <coughs> the products were not, they, were, they weren't up to par, yeah. and they were mostly embarrassing. I think that because I, I let other people have final approval over my name and likeness, yeah. and they were allowed to do whatever they wanted with it. The, the products were shoddy, and they were super embarrassing, and I was very lucky that it was only in the 80s because um, there was no YouTube or Instagram to, to keep it out there forever yeah, <laughs> and I embarrass know, right? you further. But I learned early on that, that I had to keep control of my name and likeness, and so the next time I got opportunities to do licensing, like in the 90s, I fought for that control, and, and um, it was hard. It, they didn't want to give it up. Yeah. So for people who are just joining us, we're actually here at Chase. You just partnered with them, giving small business tips to uh, other entrepreneurs. Right. And you actually created this this book <coughs> of Tony Hawk tricks. <laughs> yes. Very uh, yeah. um, a small business guide to you know growing a business. What <coughs> are some of your because people don't have the name you have, so it, you know in a lot of sense it was easier for you. But for the average entrepreneur, what are some things that you learn that your advice to them? Um, I think my first bit of advice is to learn all aspects of your business because there are things that maybe you're interested in or, or that you don't think you'll be good at, but it's going to benefit you in the end to really understand them. You know, whether it be how does retail work or how purchase orders or marketing, um, at least learn how it functions because it's going to benefit you going forward and, and you're going to have a leg up on, on your competition um, and stay true to your to your brand and your focus you know don't get distracted yeah do you think right now um, <coughs> it's a good climate for small businesses especially even under the, <coughs> the current administration do you think the climate is right I think the climate well I think that th there's always opportunity yeah and if you have a product or an idea that fills a void it, that's the right time. I, I don't know if there's ever a good time necessarily for entrepreneurs, um, but for sure there are other ways to get recognized now, instead yeah. of just the old, the old school ways. You know, through it, be it social media or TV or you know, things like Shark Tank. Like, there are other avenues now for businesses to be recognized. Yeah. So when I was researching you, I mean, you've had. <clears throat> A vast career, you know, you've done a lot of things, and I, I actually, I forgot that you did those those jackass movies and oh, things yeah. like that. Do you have any regrets <laughs> on anything that, you know, you've done? I. Or you just look back and laugh. I yeah, I would hate to say that I have regrets because I've learned. Every experience has been a, a learning process, and so 
even in those, like, there were, I regret a lot of the licensing I did in the 80s, but at the same time, that wouldn't have set me up for now and keeping control of the brand and, and having more quality. So I maybe I regret uh, agreeing to do the Wild Boys show with the Jackhouse crew and dressing up in a monkey suit and trying to do a loop. That, <laughs> that I regret because I broke my pelvis that day. Yeah. And uh, it took me about six months to start skating again. So um, I could do without that one. Yeah. I didn't learn a whole lot <laughs> from that process. No. Uh, what, what, what's on your bucket list? <clears throat> what's what's um, next for your, for your brand, for your, your legacy? Um, I would like to see Birdhouse continue to thrive, my, my skate brand, and, and possibly more international sales recognition for that um and to champion skateboarding you know i feel like skateboarding is on a is is valid enough to be something that kids choose to do as easily as they choose to play basketball or soccer or cricket in other countries and i feel like we haven't reached that level of acceptance yet internationally so how, whatever i can do to to help that i would love to <laughs>